Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, let's start. Uh, today is Monday, so it's Motivational Monday. And I'm excited because we are going to be talking, carrying on talking about the seven habits of highly effective people. So let's recall the seven habits of highly effective people. Habit one was to be proactive. Habit two was to begin with the end in mind. Habit three, hi, GP, good morning. We put things, first things first. Habit four, think win-win. Habit five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Habit six, synergize. And habit seven, sharpen the saw. The, the first three habits are what we call private victories that grow you from dependence to independence. And the rest of the habits are public victories as you grow in interdependence with others. Today, we start looking at victory uh, in the public domain. So habit four, think win-win. Okay, let me introduce by quoting Stephen Covey himself, what he says about win-win. Win-win is a frame of mind and heart that constantly seeks mutual benefit in all human interactions. Win-win means that agreements or solutions are mutually beneficial mutually satisfying. With a win-win solution, all parties feel good about the decision and feel committed to the action plan. Win-win sees life as a cooperative, not a competitive arena. Win-win is based on the paradigm that there is plenty for everybody, that one person's success is not achieved at the expense or exclusion of the success of others. Yep, okay. So good morning, uh, Wendy, May, uh, all of you who are on board. Uh, so, now, I don't think we are saying that win-win is a more moral position. Okay. In the context of being a highly effective person, we are saying it is very pertinent to being a highly effective person. A life worth living is consistent with, number one, success. And, and I use the seven habits, okay, which talks about excellence and interdependence. In interdependence, relationships are our first focus. Okay. And habit two is look at first things first. Relationships are very, very important in this paradigm. Okay. Secondly, a life worth living is consistent with our highest human need. According to Anthony Robbins, you know, uh, we have six human needs. And number five is growth, number six is contribution, the highest is contribution, which is about making a difference to others. And that makes life meaningful, that makes life most fulfilling. At the end of your life, you will say, I have lived my life well. Okay. Those of you who have been through the Asia Works program, you remember the basic uh, course, the red-black game. Okay, that was an introduction to what a world looks like when you play win-win. Those of you who have... Uh, Memorize the self-confidence formula. You know, you will recall that uh, at the end it says fifth. I fully realize that no wealth or position can long endure unless put upon truth and justice. Therefore, I engage in no transaction which does not benefit all whom it affects. I succeed by attracting to myself the forces I wish to use and the cooperation of other people. I induce others to serve me because of my willingness to serve others. Okay, so that's uh, that's I think win-win uh, in our previous experience. Okay, now I want to share with you uh, two key paradigms or mindsets in win-win. First is abundance, not scarcity, and the second is about mutual benefit that give us gain. Let's talk about abundance. Okay. And I think this is an area that most of us who are listening here uh, are, are very familiar with. Okay, but we can't take it for granted. Okay. Okay, abundance. Abundance means there's enough. There's enough opportunities, there's enough customers, there's enough room at the top, there's enough resources for me when I commit myself to something. Okay. So if we look at the business that we're in, multi-level marketing, network marketing, it's a win-win business. The more my downlines, the more my uplines, the more my sidelines grow and earn, the more I grow and earn. And Zig Ziglar said you can get 
everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Okay, so that's the success formula. And you know, you, you, you see that among ourselves, among our group here, you know, when we rejoice in other people's success, it's just so much celebration when other people are succeeding. So when we talk about public victory, when Stephen Covey talks about public victory, he's not doesn't mean victory over the public, but victory of the public. Okay? You're not winning over the public, you're win it, it's the public winning. Okay? So notice this. If someone else beat you to doing something great and generous, you feel happy because the same people benefited earlier than they would have under you. It's about how other people succeed. You know, and one person uh, who really gets excited after he hears success stories is, G is Jeff. You know, I, every time after he, he hears it, you know, our teammates share at MAM and, uh, and, and, and other platforms, uh, even my BOM, he gets really, really excited. Okay? Uh, he gets excited when other people succeed. Sharon and Amos come to mind as examples of really big-hearted people who, who are looking out for others, you know, beyond their own problems and their own circumstances, they're looking out for other people. Which one's another example? It's another example. How she looks out for uh, sidelines, and not just sidelines, but down... Oh, sorry. But down lines of... I can't even switch off this phone. So I'm so sorry. Why can't I switch off this phone? Okay. Um, how Hui Swan not just looks out for sidelines, but looks out for the downlines of sidelines. It's like looking after other people's children. Okay, and she sends messages. She calls them uh, individually. Okay, and I think if you look at ourselves as an organization. Uh, JC3. You know, we've opened up our trainings, we open up our talks uh, to people from other groups. You know, we've, we've always played win-win you know, from the start. And the company itself, New Skin, influences this win-win mindset uh, by banning group identity at success events. You, know, you, you, you cannot go there and say, I am this group or I am that group. They, they want to promote a sense of family. And if you look at how a sense of family and mutual cooperation uh, makes this tough rejection business so uh, possible, so pleasant. Uh, it really makes a big difference. That's the mindset right from the top. You know. And just recently at uh, the elections uh, last week, uh, we saw how the population uh, quite clearly wants its politicians who represent them to think win-win for Singapore, not play win-lose. There's enough of that. It's a mature uh, population. So that's just some ideas on, on in independence. Uh, let's look at mutual benefit. Okay, sure, that's initial sacrifice. You know, the African proverb, if you want to walk fast, walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk together. Um, it means it's slower at the start, especially if you're fast. But then you finish the journey, and you finish the journey with, with more people. So there's some initial sacrifice uh, for, for many people. You know, I think of GP doing our JC3 calendar. You know, uh, some people say, hey, this is Sai Kang, you know. What's the CEO of Thermasek Management Services doing something like this? But I like GP who understands, you know, uh, what it means to serve. And he, and it's a spirit of abundance that he has to serve the community. And, you know, by doing the calendar, I don't know whether GP realizes this, but GP is the first to know what's going on. And he can leverage on this knowledge. So what are the other benefits of playing win-win uh, when you when you do this work for other people as you as you do this I think you develop more creativity right GP is also handling uh, holistic Wednesday he's thinking of all kinds of ideas you know you develop more resourcefulness you develop more ingenuity ingenuity is the ability to solve problems especially in new ways you develop more intelligence you, as you read as you find out more you know and then you develop more mis wisdom wisdom is the ability to apply this knowledge that you acquire. Okay. Now, when do you decide to be abundant? Okay, When you have a lot or when you don't have? Uh, I thought of giving as an example. Okay. Giving is an act that comes from abundance, not scarcity. Okay. So if you look at giving, giving is about being and it's about doing. If you take the example of a tithe, 
okay, where you give your first ten percent, your first ten percent, okay. So in last Saturday's um, Type Five Global uh, training uh, in Chapter One, I talked about having the rich and the poor. Okay, so this is a clear example. Okay, so um, a B attitude would be who I am. Who I am. Okay, I'm abundant now. So whether I'm rich or poor, I'm abundant now. A doing attitude would be wait. What I is about what I have. So wait until I'm rich, then I do. So let's say you're poor and you've just got hundred dollars. If you don't start giving ten dollars when you are poor, that's ten percent. Do you think you can give hundred thousand when you have one million dollars? I don't think so. Okay, because it's not a doing thing; it's a being thing. So we want to be abundant right from the start. Now, habit four: think win-win. It's not about compromise. Okay, or oh, I have to let the other person win. Okay, it's still about going for a win. It's still about doing your best because you can't honor other people. You can't, you can't provide a good result. You can't provide a good service unless you do your best. But remembering to have team spirit, remembering to assist people along the way, remembering to have fun, and then remembering to learn because when you're learning, you know you're benefiting all the time. Okay. Now, just one word on this. Okay, uh, to think win-win. There is a situation that you may not have any deal at all, okay? Because if you, if you, you have one position and you've got some principles in life and and some objectives in life, and the other party uh, has other principles that don't agree with you, are not in alignment with you, you can agree uh, to have no deal, okay? And that's that's okay. You're honoring, okay? Uh, you're honoring uh, the fact that you. Uh, have got a position, okay? So Lincoln said, just as I would never be a slave, I would also never be a slave master. It's better to have no deal than to have a deal that is not beneficial to both. That requires courage to step away from something, okay? So I want to end with a, uh, with a short story, okay? Uh, as as an, just an example of, um, uh, of win-win. And this comes from Teach Your Team to Fish by Laurie Beth Jones. Uh, it's a uh, chapter called He Taught Community. Okay. Gloria gave the highly successful gospel singer and author, tells a beautiful story as she sits at the stage at the praise gathering. Every year, 10,000 people fill the Indianapolis Civic Center to bursting as people from all over the country come together to feast on praise and worship and listen to some of her husband's husband Bill's corny jokes. When the spotlight goes on Gloria and she gathers up her skirt and gets out the book, the whole auditorium hushes itself like a child about to be read a bedroom story. Gloria tells about a person who was asked to bring a chicken salad to the neighborhood picnic. This person starts to grouse and complain, saying, sure, everybody else gets to bring ice and I have to cook a whole chicken. Then the person eventually shows up and finds to her surprise that there is an entire banquet laid out, almost as far as the eye can see. Not only her chicken salad, but also fried chicken and cooked corn and mashed potatoes and watermelon and chocolate cake. Suddenly, the woman realizes that God didn't need my chicken salad. He just wanted me to come to the banquet so I could sample Beth's chocolate cake. There is a lot to be said for one team's opening up to another team's talent and joining them in a community banquet table. As Jesus said, happy are those who have been invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb, implying that we shall receive the benefits of two becoming one, the multiplied happiness that results from them doing so. So that's, uh, uh, that's just a little example. And I think, you know, for those of you who come to leaders gathering, you know, you put in your uh, your 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 amount and you go there you know that some people that other people there will be excelling and you are really really sharing okay so that's uh, an experience